300, 400,000 views, 500,000 views on a video of a growing water ball. Why is this on my home screen again? Why is this on my feed? The money stopped, the views stopped, my videos stopped. I was more than just water balls. This water ball got me 178 million views and in every way possible, it changed my life. Looking back, it sounds simple, right? But it was not. And to understand how all of that happened, I wanna take you back with me all the way to the year 2010. So in 2010, I was in college and I had this brand new job as a sixth grade science teacher. I was both nervous and excited. I was nervous because I was facing a group of 25 sixth graders and I knew I needed to bring in exciting lessons for the kids or I would get eaten up alive as a new teacher. I was also excited because I knew what I had to show them was gonna blow their minds. Fast forward to the end of the year, the kids had an amazing year. I showed them tons of cool science experiments, was looking forward to redoing my job for the following year for the new sixth graders coming up. So here is the problem. The following year, as the sixth graders come into my class from fifth grade, they knew all my experiments already because my good friend who was teaching fifth grade used all my ideas to show it to them. So when they came into my class, they knew every experiment I was about to do. I was stuck. I needed new material, new experiments, and I needed better and more exciting experiments than what they had already seen and everything that I had already had. I decided I'm gonna up the game and I'm gonna take everything to the next level. So went online and I found this guy, Steve Spengler, and he was doing the coolest, biggest experiments. And I'm like, Hello. I got it. I watched some videos of him on YouTube. He was blowing up at the time. He was going on some big talk shows, but he also had a website where he sold stuff and he did it in such a cool way that I wanted to emulate that and I wanted to bring that into my classroom because I knew it would definitely be a level up from the previous year. Was so excited to have new things and I brought it into sixth grade, showed them the experiment. They were blown away even more than the previous year's class who, by the way, came to me and said, how come you never showed that to us? And I told my current class, you guys are lucky because the experiments this year are next level. So everything was going fine. I was doing a really exciting demo on gyroscope, where gyroscopes are found. And I actually had a gyroscope that I brought into class. It was spinning in the box. It was the most mind blowing thing to see the actual box spinning. Everyone was excited. Everyone was watching the experiment, asking questions. And I see the principal through the glass on my door, walking down the hallway, coming to my door. I was so pumped because I wanted him to see everybody engaged and happy and such a cool science lesson. And he walks in, I'm waiting for the most awesome feedback. And he looks at me with a stern face, says it needs to be quiet in here. And he walks out. I was stunned. My heart sank. I was so deflated. The kids were having a great time. The kids were learning. They were actually seeing in action what a gyroscope does. It was noisy, but it was positive energy. It was something that the kids would remember forever, would learn from. And the only thing he focused on was the negative of noise. He didn't see any positive. It hurt, it hurt. And day after day, week after week, that same reaction, you need to quiet down in here, you need to keep class decorum. There was never a positive, a smile. There was never any positive encouragement or compliment from him. And as my boss, that was a huge thing for me. It didn't stop me from bringing in experiments. I just kept trying to tell the kids, you gotta quiet down. We waited to the end of the day and I used that as sort of a bribe to the kids. We're gonna do the science at the end after all the subjects. I was able to get them under control for the start of the day with them knowing we're gonna do something really cool at the end. So that was a little bit of a solution. Still never got any positive feedback from him, but I knew my job was secure. And as time went on, the comments started becoming less and less and he started to not come into my room anymore. He got so much positive feedback from parents and from the kids and his actual own grandson was in my class. So knowing that he was in my class, knowing how happy the kid was, knowing from the parents how happy the kids were and how happy the parents were, I knew he was getting that feedback. So he got off my back. I could pretty much bring any experiment I want, not have to worry about how the class was acting during the experiments. At the time, I was looking to start a family and I knew a family cannot be raised on just a part-time teacher's salary alone. I was looking to start a business and that made me start thinking, what if I started this as a business? 
I wholesale the items, start a website to put all the items on the website, and just direct people to the site where they can buy all the experiments that they want. And that's how Incredible Science was born. I spent way too much money designing the website because I wanted it to pop. But I also felt that people couldn't tell what these cool experiments were just from a picture. To compete with this giant, massive Amazon, I needed to be different. I needed to do something better that they didn't do at the time. And to me, that was actually showing a video of what the product does in real life. I just wanted people to see my items before they bought it. Just experience how cool they were, just like my students did, just like I thought they were pretty cool. A video was the best way to persuade someone to show them exactly how cool the items were. There was this company called Dunecraft at the time who were selling these growing polymer balls. I saw these big, giant water balls that grew from a tiny little circle. I thought that was pretty cool. I put it on the website, uploaded the video that I filmed at three in the morning with my phone, my hand as a tripod, in my pajamas at night. It was absolutely insane. Fast forward, I think it was a few months later, I started getting comments from YouTube. I'm like, oh, that's cool. People are commenting on my video. All through the day, my phone kept blowing up, comment after comment on YouTube. Every time I would feel my phone ring or vibrate, I would take it out, another comment on YouTube, another comment. I'm like, what's going on? I went into the YouTube video and I was blown away. I'm like, 500 people watched my video. That's amazing. And I saw everything explode. Hundreds of thousands of views, 300, 400,000 views. My subscriber count was going insane. I was getting up to like 5,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers a day. And I was approaching nearly 500,000 views on a video of a growing water ball. Almost 15 years later, people reminisce and tell me just how much that video brings them back to their childhood, which is so cool. I had seen the potential of just a simple little video, and I figured, what if I make other cool videos, the ones that my students got so excited about, the really cool experiments. Let me bring that to YouTube. Let me show them all the cool things I have to offer besides for water balls. Started making other videos. They didn't get many views. People only were obsessed with the polymer ball videos. And then I was like, let me make a part Two. People love that so much, I think it's time for a sequel. And I filmed part two. The 50 million views now. So I was getting millions of views. I was sending out hundreds of water balls a day. Everything was amazing. Views, money, the videos were beautiful. They were skyrocketing until the worst possible thing happened. A recall on a toy called Water Balls. The toy absorbs water and can expand 400 times its original size. This voluntary recall happened after a baby needed surgery to have one of these toys removed last year. I was horrified to know that this item nearly killed a kid. I quickly scrolled through all my orders and I guess fortunately from my like guilt factor, I wasn't the one who had shipped it to that address. Although, you know, the product was everywhere at the time. It was, it had gone viral and everyone was ordering it even from other places. So I knew then and there, this product is over with. I wasn't sure what would happen to the video. And in fact, it actually got a slight boost from that because people were searching, product was off the shelves, the video was still doing fine until it wasn't. YouTube's algorithm had changed. This was a few months later. I went from hundreds of thousands of views a day to maybe a couple thousand. The money stopped, the views stopped, my videos stopped. But I had seen the potential of just a simple little video. I was more than just water balls. It didn't make me excited to make videos like that. I wanted to show everybody and give everybody the cool feeling that my class had when seeing other cool experiments started doing other videos and now 10 years later some of these videos such as gyroscope video has like 30 million views you type in gyroscope on YouTube and I am the top video that comes up but that's just some of the items I had at the time some of the items I thought were cool and some of the videos I thought may be trending on YouTube I figured hey let me make a video of that also like some of the slime videos the Orbeez videos people were starting to make some smaller regular size Orbeez videos I did soda and Mentos videos I started doing liquid nitrogen videos I started doing dry ice videos and at the time I still had to learn how to properly handle those and how to use it and what experiments you could do with it so I was learning on the job while 
doing experiments in front of the camera. Definitely a tornado and bottle videos, as that A was something I sold. And there was a cool like DIY home version that you could do. There were lights and laser videos. There was instant snow videos. I put so much time and effort into each of those videos. I was hoping to recapture that virality of the water balls from just the sum of those videos that I mentioned. I mean, I even tried vlogging. Summer day in New York City. Took my camera, walked around my neighborhood. Everyone thought I was insane, because at the time, vlogging wasn't really a thing unless you were a YouTube diehard. When I was doing all these product videos, these items people didn't care about. They only wanted the water balls. And I wanted to show them other cool things, but they weren't interested. So my channel was big enough that I actually had a YouTube manager. I spoke to the YouTube manager and he said, you really need to connect with your audience, so you need to be in the videos. And that was a big step for me to be okay with because I was not interested in showing myself to the world when I'm vulnerable here. People know exactly who I am and everybody could hide behind their phone, computer, TV, whatever. Oh, someone's crying. Hold on, my daughter's up, of course. Hang on. And I'm back. Whew. This is like real behind the scenes of how I film my videos, running from one second to the next, getting the videos out by the skin of my teeth. Where was I? YouTube manager. He said, you need to show yourself. I didn't know how to talk to a camera or to people and I wasn't interested. I don't want people judging me, how I sound, how I look, how I act. I wanted them to watch my water ball videos, watch this. That was the only way. He said how you're gonna grow, how people are gonna like you. You need to connect with them. Was it scary for you to show yourself? Oh God, next kid is up. Hang on, I'll, yes it was scary and I'm gonna tell you in a minute. All right, so yes, I was scared. I didn't know how to just say, hi, it's me, now what? My big face reveal video involved water balls. It's so cringe. Hey YouTube, it's me. It's me showing my face for the first time. It's about time. So I broke in slowly. I was looking to catch that fire. I was extremely scared. I didn't want to be on camera, but I did want that life of just being able to make videos. And the only way to do it was to step out of my comfort zone by a lot. Go against every grain of me saying, this is not what I'm comfortable with. And I did it anyway. So I started putting more time into understanding what made a good video. The filming of it and the edit of it and the music that went with it. So I was doing it all myself and learning on the fly while being in grad school, proud new father, working jobs to pay for life. It was a lot. It was getting harder and harder to put in the time to make a quality video. And I didn't feel there was a point. And that was sort of the start of the end in a way, because the more time I put in, the more time I needed, the less time I was having. And it became this vicious cycle of wanting to make it better, not having enough time, not wanting to release it until it's perfect, trying to make it perfect, needing more time to make it perfect, needing more time to edit, not having enough time to do it, not wanting to release it until it's perfect, over and over and over. So the gaps in between each video became longer and longer. The views weren't that great either, so my motivation to do it was I would spend three weeks on a video and I would get a few thousand views, or even a hundred thousand views, make a couple hundred dollars after three weeks of work, hours and hours each day, $70, $50. Just wasn't worth it anymore at the time. But I was still pushing because I knew what was possible, but it was, the motivation was definitely waning. And then fidget spinners came along and we got another light. I was obsessed with it the minute I got my hands on one. It was, I was like, oh my God, I gotta make a video of this. Anytime I saw something cool, my mind was in something cool, show the world. So I was like literally one of the first videos on YouTube to show a fidget spinner and having all that background already on making a good video, what constitutes a good video, what's gonna be in a video, I made the fidget spinner video. And that fidget spinner video got millions of views. It got me right back up into the spotlight. I mean, I was on CNN's homepage with my face, not just my hand showing water bowls. I put out more fidget spinner videos. I put out more fidget spinner videos. I was getting a lot of views, but it was bothering me because it was the same problem with the water bowls. I don't wanna be dedicated to water bowls my entire life, making videos of water bowls. I don't wanna be dedicated to fidget spinners. So I started branching out again to other types of videos and the views just collapsed again and it was so frustrating. I'm like, people, I have so many cool things to show you, watch it. There's so much more than water bowls and fidget spinners. Can you just please watch my videos so I can just do this full time? And they just 
were not watching it. Fidget spinner trend died. I was right back in the same place as I was before the fidget spinners in that endless loop of trying to make a quality video, not getting views. And it was just very discouraging and frustrating, but I was still pushing along. And then the pandemic came. And the little ounce of motivation I had left, the little ounce of push and drive was completely wiped out. You know, my father happened. I never really wanted to be on camera, but after that point, I was not appearing in front of anybody. YouTube was over, camera was over. I was huddled in my personal private cave after that. Game over. Time goes on, time heals in a way. And I found myself missing YouTube. I found myself missing the social connection, as crazy as that sounds from where I started, saying, hey, this is me. The itch came back. I wanted to show cool experiments. I wanted to entertain. In the past, I had no time to do it all. So I was looking for an editor. I went on Fiverr, I didn't know where else to go. Looking through samples of videos, samples of videos, and my editor's looking at me right now through the screen behind the camera. And I found Luke, a godsend. We connected right off the bat as people, and the plan was to just go until people find us again and produce quality videos with awesome storylines and awesome visuals. Videos that people would enjoy watching and want to watch. Not clickbait titles, not clickbait thumbnails, and not clickbait videos. Actual quality, amazing content videos. And that was the plan. Do everything the right way. And you do everything the right way, it's hard to not get noticed. And it's just a matter of time until we knock down that wall and everybody realizes how awesome these videos are. So we made the Cloud in My Backyard video. I had this cool new experiment with the balloons I was experimenting with. We started doing a video on that. And we started really getting into the deep trenches of YouTube best practices with thumbnails and titles. These last three months have been the busiest, most insane months of my life, trying to juggle life work, which is at the highest, you know, most intense, most busiest level it's ever been at. And then, hey, I'm trying to become, you know, the next Mark Rober, Mr. Beast, by the way, on the side. So yeah, it's been insane. I'm up to like three in the morning filming videos and trying to do all my responsibilities. But I've never felt more excited and more motivated than now because I know when we come up with a plan, I film that, I'm done. I hand it over to him. It's like those relay races in the Olympics. I have someone that I know is gonna take it and deliver it. Not only are the videos better than they've ever been, the possibility is now greater than it's ever been of being able to blow up on YouTube and to be able to just do this full time. Can you believe these two polymer balls got me at close to 200 million views on YouTube and set me on a path to make videos for 15 years? It's just unbelievable to think back and to look back at all those videos and to see just how far of a ride and how much of an evolved channel and person I've become off camera and on camera. And I'd love for you to join me on the ride for the new videos that are coming pretty much every single week. So hit that subscribe button. I can't wait to show you what I have coming next because there is so much up my sleeve, so many awesome videos coming, and you will be blown away. So thanks so much for watching. And as always, like I've said for the last 15 years, stay incredible. Here's your story, let's begin. The world is fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before you. Could be love. Could be larger than